at least two years ago I said this. Receiver. Well, the reason for that, that there was no feasible build for the arch carrying handle if the charging handle was placed just above the pistol grip. There was no feasible build for the arch carrying handle. Yeah, couldn't be more wrong. Hey YouTube, your typical so and so here, back with yet another LEGO Miniature Guns design. If you can already tell, this is a Grandpappy's M16 in Vietnam. Oh yes, this was the original, but before I can even talk about it, I'm gonna give you the blueprints right now. Did you get it? Let's talk about it. So, in order for me to fully achieve the carrying handle and the charging handle in one M16, I had to change up my design completely. I used a one by one dual knob configuration. At the top you have your charging handle and carrying handle, or at the bottom you have your pistol grip and your magazine hold. The design for the top is basically a one by four plate piece with a knob at each end for the carrying handle. Behind it you'll see the charging handle which is basically a one by two with a center knob, connected by a one by two flat with a sloping piece for the rear of the iron sight, and the rest is history if you can take a look at that. Spoiler alert, we lost the war. For the buttstock, I simply placed a one by two center knob piece right at the edge of the one by one knob brick configuration that I so claim. The handguard also has one substantial change up as well, you'll notice a disc piece. Personally I think it's to give more depth to the AR-15 when it was initially intended in the 1916s, you know, the one where it didn't have a forward assist and it was prone to jam once every 500 rounds or so in the jungles of Vietnam. Well, with that in mind, the AA-1 came along, alongside your grandpappy's Navy SEAL's cousin's XM-177 carbine, the Colt Commando. Which, if you can't already tell, is essentially the predecessor to the M4 carbine. Here's the design schematic for the Colt Commando. The only major difference was that the Colt Commando used one one by one double knob brick, whereas the M16 only used two. Initially, this receiver configuration was going to be mainstay with my M16 as well. The trouble with that is that the lower receiver, or the upper receiver sometimes, sway around when I swing the weapon around. So in the end, with the M16, I stuck to two one by one double knobs to help that balance configuration. You'll also notice that I didn't use the 1x1 angular bricks as my previous LEGO Miniature Guns designs. When you compare my newer M16 AR-15 designs with an older M4 platform, you'll notice that the pistol grip and the magazine between the new design is just barely narrow apart as opposed to my older designs. Don't get me wrong, the 1x1 angular brick is optimal with some designs, whereas the 1x1 double angular brick is optimal with others, the AR-15 being that example. and. Frankly, it's too good of a design. I think this final design is too great for me to pass on right now. Oh yeah, the M4A1 from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Could you believe that this game is almost 10 years old? And just in time for Call of Duty Modern Warfare to be released, the occasion seems ripe for it too. For me, this is the quintessential AR-50 design for this particular configuration. I honestly don't have much to say, you just take a look at this design and you think Modern Warfare 2. Considered my prior history with AR-15 style weapons back as far as 2012 to up to here, I went through a lot of changes and implementations to finally get to this point. Is it the first weapon system to implement it? No it wasn't. This unique design configuration was initially incepted with yet another weapons design that I've been building up to for a long time. Tune in next time to find out what that weapon system is.